Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we've seen a bit of a reaction here in the indices, as far as the equity uh, equities, as far as the, the S and P's. A uh, pretty nice yank down here into the 33 single digits. We kind of pop back up here to 33, uh, 13, and then of course uh, we also saw a corresponding dip here in the Russell, as well as also a dip in the NASDAQ, uh, once again, on the backdrop of uh, the concerns uh, with uh, the flu issue with uh, China and, um, well, the virus, I should go on and say. We saw this happening um, not too long after or in Asia, and I did go on and post some comments uh, or post some news comments. We also had BOJ yesterday or early in the evening. Um, so that's what's generally has moved this market. At least it's gone and caused a little bit of a dip here in the dollar yen. Nothing too major, although we were trading about 10.22, I think it was at the time. And then also we kind of just dropped. We started continually to drop uh, further, but we haven't had a major reaction uh, per se. We may see the indices pair back a little bit further depending on this circumstance. Um, but with the exception of the yen, we haven't seen that much of a, a pair back here uh, whatsoever. Um, your dollar's kind of holding up. Uh, what, what we do have um, later on in about another hour and a half, uh, Trump is going to be speaking at Davos. Um, we shall see how that plays out, but it's just kind of like a, a heads up as far as that goes. Uh, we will go and take a look at... Um, economic data that we'll be coming into. We did go on and uh, get uh, German producer prices. That was yesterday. So coming into today, uh, we have UK uh, claimant count and unemployment rate. That's going to be at the bottom of the hour. Uh, claimant count, Reuters poll is 23,000. Employment change, uh, gain of 110,000. And then uh, at the top of this next hour, We'll get the German Zoo, which is uh, supposed to come in at 15. It looks like we're looking for an improvement, considering the last one was a 10.7. Uh, current conditions are supposed to come in at minus 13.5, which the last one was minus 19.9, which would certainly be another improvement. Do have Mexican jobless rate. Um, that's going to be at uh, 7 a.m. Eastern. And we have uh, also uh, New Zealand dairy prices. Uh, coming into the States, uh, the only thing we have here is Johnson Red Book, but we do have Canadian manufacturing sales. That'll be released at 8.30 Eastern. We did also get a reaction, speaking of Mexican sales, uh, we did get a reaction here in the dollar peso. Um, I had mentioned this yesterday that there was a potential. Remember how I, I said that even though we were going higher in equities, uh, Dalian hasn't correspondingly moved. I mean, it's moved lower, but we could have really dropped much further. And remember, we had 1865 as that level confluence with 1862, which is the 161% extension of the recent failed rally. And we said, boy, if we do get a pullback, we'll get a snap back, which potentially could take us to 1905. But we did get a, 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 a move higher. Uh, but it's once again, it's rather constrained. Uh, at the moment. With that, we'll go on and uh, take a look at some news. So Australia and New Zealand dollars slip amid China flu concerns. The Australia and New Zealand dollars slipped on Tuesday as the market mood turned cautious amid mounting concerns as a coronavirus uh, outbreak in China could see economic damage if it spreads widely. The Aussie eased back uh, a quarter percent after being steady all morning long. Um, the Kiwi edged back to 65.94. Chinese authorities have confirmed more than 200 people have 
been infected by the new virus, which causes a type of pneumonia that has killed at least four people in the central city of Wuhan. Uh, the outbreak has spread to cities including Beijing and Shanghai, while four cases have been reported outside China in South Korea, Thailand, and Japan. Both Australia and New Zealand draw large numbers of Chinese tourists who tend to spend big, big spenders over the Lunar New Year holidays. Australia said it would step up screening of some flights from Wuhan. The outbreak was particularly badly timed as the tourism industry has already been badly mauled by bushfires sweeping the country. Consumer sentiment had only just been recovering after a very poor Christmas shopping season. Survey for the ANZ out Tuesday showed its index of com confidence bounced nine-tenths percent last week, taking it back to where it was in mid-December. Notably, the time to buy a house old uh, items category claimed 4.7 percent to its our climb 7.7% to its highest level since October. A separate survey of household spending intentions from the CBA found a continued reluctance to splash out on retail goods, but plenty of demand for houses. Home buying intentions spiked higher in December and are now running at a record rate consistent with ongoing dwelling uh, uh, price growth, said CBA Chief Economist Michael Blythe, but they're also at the point where early signs of a positive wealth effect are starting to emerge in areas uh, like vehicles. House prices have shot higher in Sydney and Melbourne since the two-year downturn ended in June and have added tens of billions to measures of overhaul household wealth. Well, the RBA is holding the, uh, this windfall will eventually bolster confidence and feed through to the consumption through the process Proving to uh, is proving to be slow. And lastly, the yen rises and the yuan slumps as stocks fall on China virus. The yen pulled ahead and the yuan fell against the dollar on Tuesday as the spread of a pneumonia-like virus in China sparked a sudden bout of risk aversion and sent Asian stocks skidding. The yuan slipped against the U.S. currency on offshore and uh, <clears throat> Trade after a Chinese health expert said the virus can pass from person to person as the fourth death from the illness was confirmed. The outbreak of the disease, which has spread from the central, central city of Wuhan, is still in the early stages. However, it comes right before the peak travel season during the Lunar Year holidays, ra uh, raising risks that it could spread further. Hong Kong stocks fell sharply at the moment open due to the worries about the virus, which sparked risk-off trades that pushed up the yen and U.S. Treasury, said Takuya uh, Kanda, general manager uh, with uh, Gaitami uh, Research. So far, the number of deaths from the virus is low, but so hopefully it will not be a big panic. In the onshore market, the yuan fell to 6.897 in the lowest level in almost a week, and the dollar index against a basket of six major currencies stood at 97.58. The yen remained higher after the Bank of Japan kept its short-term interest rate targets at minus 0.1 and its pledge to guide the 10-year government bond yields around zero. The BOJ also nudged up a growth forecast, but traders will uh, scrutinize government's uh, Hirohiko Kuroda's marks at a press conference later on Tuesday. Elsewhere, its currencies, the Aussie, Aussie dollar, uh, uh, See, fell to uh, 68.65 as worries about the Chinese virus hurt currencies sensitive to the risk. The euro was locked in a narrow range before the ECB meeting on Tuesday, on Thursday, I should say, where it is expected to launch a comprehensive review of central bank strategy, including the ECB's inflation target. Against the dollar, the euro traded at 9.68. The common currency was also quoted at uh, 85.30 pence. The ECB's first meeting of the year is most likely to launch a rethink of an inflation goal the bank has failed to meet since 2013. The scope and scale of the review will be a key focus for markets given the far-reaching implications for monetary policy. A slight, uh, slightly uh, brighter tone to data means the ECB's assessment of the economic outlook will also be watched closely by investors on Thursday. With that, let's go on and get into the analysis. Well, with Monday being a holiday here in the States, uh, we saw basically almost no movement whatsoever. And as you can see that, we just kind of 
dip just a little bit lower on Monday, but we stayed well contained, same as we are right now. So uh, we are we don't have any changes whatsoever here in the euro to speak of. It's still going to be ten fifty six on the downside, and we need to get above eleven thirty uh, and to generate any further upside. And 1130 would be key on the upside. So no changes here in the euro dollar. As I said, 1056 on the downside, 1130 on the upside. With that, we're going to move into the cable. Same thing here. Obviously, no surprise with uh, the lack of movement here in uh, during the uh, MLK holiday on Monday, um, we saw no movement whatsoever. Just like the year, we kind of dipped a little bit lower just under the pivot, but we are just right now currently at 130. These are going to remain the same thing here also. Uh, we had 29.36 for support. Um, looks like yesterday the low was 29.53. So we held above that. And on the upside, 3046. So no changes here. Once again, rather quiet trading. Now with the Aussie dollar, we did go in and challenge and come down here to this key 6848, which is our support level. Um, I think we do have to move this because in light of the uh, covarious virus, uh, coronavirus, um, there's a potential we can go and move lower. Um, and so at least for now, we're going to go and have our support right there. Rather tight, but that would come in. It's just going to be 68.27. So just a little bit lower here. And resistance on the upside. I'll just call that actually right there. Sixty eight eighty five. Obviously, the risk um, that we're seeing here with the um, with the concerns coming out of China it weighs heavily on the Aussie as well as the Kiwi. Let's go and move on to the Kiwi. We do have um, we do have uh, New Zealand dairy prices this morning. Uh, same thing as the um, as the Aussie, but certainly not. In I don't want to say necessarily a precarious position, but certainly not in the same weakened position as the Aussie. But the risk is still for us to go in and move lower, and that is going to come in right there at sixty-five seventy. I think we actually have to allow this for a move here lower, which is going to come in right there. We've got sixty-five forty-three confluence with sixty-five forty-four. We'll just call it the sixty-five forty-four in the thirty-eight percent.
and on the upside. Right there at 66.35. Not really a whole lot as far as analysis today because once again we had done the uh, done the analysis leading into Monday and Monday was quiet. Uh, so obviously not any major changes um, at this point. Just basically some updating to the analysis we had already in place. We're going to move into the dollar CAD. And the dollar CAD remains quiet um, as it has been for several days. Look at this. I mean, we've been in one heck of a tight range here. Um, so the resistance is still going to remain the same, 3094. It still remains bearish. Um, and on the downside, uh, 2989. 29. We have had this holding area here. 29.89 here. I mean, I mean, uh, 3029. But once again, like I said, we're looking potentially that if this does break lower, support comes in at 29.89. Kind of holding here for now. Potential to go on and break a little bit lower, but we've just been holding steady. And here we are with the dollar peso. We did talk about this yesterday because we said, you know, even though it's pulled back, it hasn't pulled back when you can as much when you consider the move that we've seen here in equities. And with that, uh, we talked about, hey, look, it, if we do get this pair back, it's set up for a, a snapback. Uh, and we're looking for potentially, if we do get that snapback, 1905. Well, we've seen the S&Ps pull back a bit. But the reaction has been rather muted, the same with the dollar yen. Uh, but we will go and update the levels, though. So right now, on the downside, it's going to be 1865. And the, uh, on the upside, Right there. 1880. Which is still the same here. 1880. And let's go move into the dollar yen. Well, we're still holding here. Um, it looked like potentially we could even go higher, although, like I said, when they had the, the news break out about the, uh, the virus coming out of China, um, we did go in and see this uh, come back. But even then, like as I mentioned here, it's been a rather muted pullback. Really, it's, you know, as I mentioned um, yesterday morning, everything's being driven by equities at this point. I mean, other than, like I said, unless you're looking at the cross rates. What we'd be looking for in... And we talked about this yesterday. Um, support would come in at 985. Now we can adjust that a little bit lower because uh, once again, if we do go in and get a dip in equities, the secondary area is going to be 965. You can see that coming in right there, 965. So we're going to go and move this 
if we do break. Now, we had, remember yesterday we had our support at um, 985. The low so far has been, take a look here. Looks like 989. But if we do see that secondary push lower, then I believe that's where we'll go to is 965. Not me, not, yeah, 965. So we want to go and move this down to 65. And on the upside, Call Moving into the cash dollar index, um, well, the key level above is this, you know, we've mentioned before here, this 97.67 right here, um, actually coming in right there at 68, but the key level is actually 97.89, uh, and we're going to go on and um, put that right there, you can see we already had it before, 97.89, and on the downside, um, we finally got above that 42. But right now, you can see right there, 97.30. Actually, going to move it right there, 97.31, 97.31. Still a ways away. Move this down just a bit. Not a whole lot of significance to be placed into this, which is the wick is a little bit short to say it would be a gravestone doji but don't forget yesterday was so quiet so i wouldn't put I'll place a lot of significance on that and once again as i said because of the holiday yesterday we practically saw no movement um we're not really seeing much as far as there isn't a whole lot of change here as far as analysis it's just a you know some of these just remain exactly the same just basically a refinement uh you know, maybe move, move, moving the uh, resistance level just a little bit, a few digits, with the exception of, like I said, the the Aussie and uh, the Kiwi a little bit uh, have a little bit further impact to those currencies. With that, we're going to move into the uh, cross rates. So we did see this uh, market pair back a little bit uh, further today, obviously with the yen pairs. Um, certainly there's some risk there. Uh, certainly you'll expect to see more with the Aussie yen versus the, the Kiwi yen. But nonetheless, we need to go on and update this a little bit closer as to what the next area they would be looking at to go on and make a run to. Um, Coming across here, you can see the volume coming across, a lot of touches. It's 72.20, but we know 72 is key. I think in time we will get down to 72, but for right now, 
We'll place the support right there. 72, 19. And on the upside, where you can see that that's going to be limited right there, 72, it's called The euro yen is a little bit interesting because with the ECB coming up this week, um, the euro continues to remain a bit on the back foot. But we will look at what well, we do see some demand coming in across here, which is 2162. 2162. You can see the touches coming across there. See that right there coming across right here and here. So that's where we're coming up with that 2162. On the upside, I think it's going to be rather limited. You can see that coming right across right there. See those touches coming across from here to here, right there. 2240, 2240. And that might be a tough row to hold to get there. Let's see right there, 2238. Which is where we had it before. Let's go and move into the Euro odd. We have the potential to move a little bit higher here, even though we mentioned yesterday it's a battle of which currency is the weaker, but um, With uh, the impact, there's far greater impact uh, or risk to the Aussie in light of the China virus issue. So that's why we're seeing a little bit of an upside. Um, I think potentially we can still push a bit higher from here. So we're going to have the resistance coming in right there. Which isn't too much further. We'll go right there. 6215, 62.15. Downside of things is going to be rather limited, but we'll see that coming right across here. And really, it's more about the risk for the odd. Um, so it's going to be right there. Move on to the Euro Kiwi. Trying 
trading relatively quiet, but I think that with the risk, we can probably move a little bit higher, which is going to take us right there. Which is going to be 68.48. 68.48. So we got the movement going that way. We just got some UK data out. Let's go on and show that. <clears throat> Claim account came in at 14.9 uh, thousand, almost 15 thousand. Um, unemployment rate 3.8, holding steady. Employment change up 208 thousand. And we are seeing a move here in the cable. Let's go and get back to the Euro Kiwi. And on the downside, as far as risk, decent amount of volume coming in right there. It's going to be 67.42, but it's a tight range. Um, it's just a little bit lower line there. It's called 6732. That, that in itself might be a little bit of a stretch. Once again, because the risk is to the um, Aussie and the year and the Kiwi and in regards to the uh, virus. With that, let's go and move into the Aussie yen. No surprise here, we're starting to get a bit of a slide back. And I think that that can continue. So we're actually gonna go straight down here to the trend line right there. That's gonna come in at And the upside right there, right there though. Closing high from yesterday or close I should say from yesterday. That coincides right here with this high here and just above these levels. So there's your resistance coming into today. 75, 72, actually we opened right there too, 75, 72. Still remains bullish, I mean we are above the trend line, but I do believe that we'll be taking a trip down there to the trend line, 74, 88. Let's go move into the guppy. A gentle move higher, um, despite some strength of what we've seen here with the yen. Resistance comes in right there at 43, 43. It looks like they've already tried to tag it just now on that news. Well, no, 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 they didn't. So we're going to go right there. Forty-three, forty-five, forty-three, forty-five. 
and the pull to the downside. You can see some pretty good volume coming all the way across here. And uh, there's your support, 42.94. As I mentioned, you know, we were so quiet yesterday, we're not seeing a lot of changes whatsoever. So it's basically a refinement to that, but it's gonna be 42.95. Let's go into the sterling odd. Should see a good little up movement on that. And we are doing seeing just that. You can see here that this is the key level and probably going to reach that anyway, which is going to be 9058. That's going to be the, the resistance. 9058. Provides a um, good solid target there. I think they will get there, which is 90.58. And on the downside, as we launch above this, actually we'll go right across here. See there? That's going to be 89. There, 89.84, that's 89.84 for support, the story nod. And there we have it. And like I said, we just, it's just a refinement of some of these. Obviously there've been some greater changes, but for the most part, like I said, with no, almost no trading to say, speak of, yesterday because of MLK day in uh, the States, uh, some of these has just been just a, a refinement, a uh, minor refinement. Some of these a little bit further when can't, we're looking at the, uh, the yen pairs. We're seeing the dollar head just trying to push up a little bit higher here. As I mentioned, uh, looking at the equities, This is what we're looking for, potentially going down here, 3302. We have had a couple of drops that's kind of holding over, but the concern is um, a lot of people have been chasing this. So the market is probably going to want to test those stops. And also the rebound has been rather limited because, look, this is where you'd be looking for, for resistance at. 3319 and we just simply haven't been able to get there and we're at the very early stages of this news coming out my guess is they want to press it and anyone who may have bought here thinking okay we're going to get one another jump here probably tightening their stocks so we hit those stops there um and it's not even saying much but i would say the first target is actually down here 3302 and really the real demand comes in you can see it coming across here is right there 32.95, 32.95. So that's the risk there. Uh, I mean, if you look on the downside, a move down at 32.95, I would think should translate to a move down here in the dollar yen to 9.65. And you can see right there, open it up a bit. That's the area that we got above to, and actually it's more clear on the um, two hour chart, but you can see right there coming across 965. That's where we broke from, and that's where I think that we'll be able to get to 965 if we go and get the S&Ps down to 3295. 
But that's going to be the big news driver. As I mentioned, uh, when we come into the States, we don't have any U.S. economic data. We do have um, Canadian manufacturing sales at 830 Eastern. Um, Johnson Red Book is really of no consequence. Uh, but we do have uh, New Zealand dairy prices, and then we do have a Mexican jobless rate at 7 a.m. Eastern. At the top of the hour, we will have uh, German zoo numbers. But like I said, the, the euro has been rather confined as we wait in anticipation of the ECB meeting on Thursday. With that, thanks for joining us here. And we'll see you in the chat room. Thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.